In this video, we will discover how to use caustics in V-Ray. We will first overview what they are and when to use them, then go through various scene preparation steps and finally try out all calculation methods available in V-Ray. So in this video, we're gonna discover the option that V-Ray gives us to render caustics. And in general, for any kind of render engines, caustics normally are notoriously slow to compute. That's also why in V-Ray, they are normally disabled by default. However, there are certain type of scenes, like this one here, for example, where caustics are required to give us a realistic appearance. So in this scene, for example, once I enable caustics, you can see it has a huge impact on the overall appearance and the overall image looks way more realistic. There are two types of caustics. One are reflective caustics, and this you can see here for these golden statue objects. We have these kind of interesting light patterns here on the floor. And then there are also refractive caustics, and this you can see here in this swimming pool, of course, where the surface of the water with its waves creates this kind of like interesting light pattern here underwater, which is then visible in the refractions. So as mentioned before, caustics in V-Ray are always disabled by default. And I would also recommend to leave it like this way for let's say 99% of the cases that you work on, unless you have a very specific scenario like this one in here that would really require the use of caustics in order to sell off this image. So that in general as a short disclaimer, but now let's start to set up caustics from scratch. So let's first start by working on the shaders for our water surface. And at the moment, I just have this very boring grayish diffuse color applied to our water surface. And now we would need to modify it a little bit to make it look more like water. So we would need to increase the reflection all the way to white and then do the same thing with the refractions here as well. So at the moment, our water is completely transparent. It's kind of hard to see it. And in order to make it more visible, we will give it some kind of bluish tinting that you can normally always see in swimming pools. And for this, we can use this fog color down here. So we'll just change the fog color from pure white to something like greenish bluish, for example, this kind of value in here. Once you do this, you can see now our water is extremely blue. In order to dial back the effect, we can just increase this depth amount here, for example, to a value of 25 or maybe a value of 50 to just have a way more subtle effect. Now we just need to give the water some kind of wave. So for this, I'm just gonna use a bump map and let's just add a standard noise in here and then just switch the type to fractal, give it something like two levels, maybe a size of 50. And then once you do this, you can see that now we have some kind of waves in here already. I think at the moment the effect is a bit strong. So I will go back and just reduce the bump map intensity to a value of 10, for example. Now you can see from those lines in the swimming pool that we have some kind of a distortion here already happening. There's some kind of waves on our water surface. I think like this, it looks already much better. If we want, we can now choose a different IOR for water, something like 1.33 would be probably more realistic. So let's switch to this one. And by this way, we finished the work on our basic water shader for the swimming pool in here. So now it's a question of how we can enable caustics in V-Ray. For this, we have to enter our render setup. And then before we do that, it's a good idea to just add a V-Ray caustics render element. You can also rename it to just caustics. And then in the GI tab, there's the option to enable caustics. I said by default, they are disabled. So now I will enable caustics. And then we can see we have two different kind of calculation methods. One is called photon map and one is called progressive. So let's first use this progressive mode. And that's the newer method that was added to V-Ray, I think in update 5.1 or 5.2. And this works, as the name suggests, only if you're rendering your image progressively. That means if you use the IPR by using this play button in here, or if you're doing a final rendering, you would need to switch your image sampler from the bucket type to the progressive type in here. If you render a final image and the image sampler here is set to bucket mode, and in the caustics, you use the progressive mode, then it will automatically switch this one here to the photo map and not use this progressive mode here instead. However, since we use the IPR, let's just start a new IPR with this progressive mode here enabled and let's just see what will happen. 
So I had to speed up the process for this video in order to make it not too long, but I hope you could see that the caustics now were added in progressively. So that means the image first started without any caustics and then over time they were added in progressively until we reach this end result. For now we can see that we only have these kind of reflective caustics from those objects in here and they are completely missing at the moment for our pool. And that's what we're going to change in a second. So for caustics to work with refractive shaders, the shader would need to be set up specifically. And there's this effect shadows option here, which is enabled by default. And that is how it should be if you don't use caustics. However, if you use caustics, you need to disable this. And once you do this, you can see that it immediately appears as if the light and shadows are disappearing in the pool. But once our caustics start to build up, we can get back this kind of effect. Now we have a problem that our caustics only are appearing in a certain area in here. And this we have to tackle in the next step. So caustics are generated by photons, which are cast by the light. And once I select my sunlight in here, you will see that it has this photon emit radius. And that's also previewed here in the scene. And as you can see up here, it only affects this part in here for now. So in order to affect the whole scene, I would need to raise this photon emit radius, let's say to a value of 750. As you can see now, the whole pool here is integrated into this photon emit radius. And now we have to wait and see how this new result will look like. So as you can see, our whole pool now has Corsex. We also have these kind of shadows back here in the pool. And in general, you can see it's kind of blotchy still in some parts. And that's the way how this progressive image sampler works. It would need a lot more time to basically clear up this kind of noise in here, this kind of splotchiness until you reach a final result. And this can take quite a while. So now I let it continue refining the image for roughly 10 minutes on my quite powerful 64 core CPU workstation. And even the resolution is very small. It still takes like 10 minutes in this case to get like a finished result that doesn't have any kind of splotchiness or noise and so on. So there you can see that caustics in general are quite complicated to calculate. We can now check out our caustics render pass. And if we go into the render pass, we can see that some of the caustics are now part of this render pass in here, but everything that's in the refraction somehow doesn't really show up in this caustics pass, but it's instead in the refraction pass. If we want, we can also have all the caustics together in this caustics pass. And for this, we just need to go to our shader in here and just make sure that the effect channels is set to all channels. And now it takes a moment to recalculate everything. We just speed up the progress and then we can see how this caustics pass here looks like. So as you can see, when using the effect all channels, the caustics that before were not visible because they're in the refraction are now showing up here correctly in our caustics pass. So now if we go back to the settings of our caustics, we can see that for the progressive caustics, there's basically no real options that we can choose in here. So the only two available options that we have is the search distance and the multiplier. And the search distance by Chaos own documentation is recommended to always leave at this default value of four. So you normally shouldn't really mess with it. And the multiplier basically defines how strong the caustics are. So if you use a stronger multiplier, your caustics will become more visible. And if you use a smaller multiplier, your caustics will become less visible. So that's basically everything that you would need to know about the progressive calculation method. And now let's check out the other method, which is the photon map. So the difference between the photon map and the progressive mode is that the photo map has to be pre-calculated and it's also the only option that's available if you render final images here with this bucket mode. Also, if I switch back to the caustics tab, you can see that the progressive method has way less options compared to the photo map mode. And that can be an up or a downside depending on how you look at it. So the upside of using the progressive mode is that it basically just turn it on and everything else is basically done automatically. You just need to wait until you get a clear result. 
The photo map mode, you can set up everything individually. You can even save out the photo map once it's generated so it can be loaded for future renderings without having to recalculate it again. So both have their own advantages and disadvantages. So what's important to know when using the photo map mode is that every light in your scene by default is emitting photons into the scene. And this can take quite a long time depending on how many photons you emit from what kind of light. And you can check that by just going in the V-Ray properties of the light. Then you can see I have two lights here in the scene. One is this sunlight and one is this ambient light. And for the ambient light, for example, I disabled the caustics because I don't need them for this light. And in general, if you have a scene that has a lot of lights, you maybe only want to emit caustics from your main light, which has the biggest contribution on your scene. And if you have some small, tiny lights, you don't want all of them to generate caustics because this will take a long amount of time. So apart from the amount of lights which are generating caustics, also the caustic subdivisions for each light is the key factor to determine how long time it will take to render because the higher this number here will go, the longer the caustic generation will take place but also the more detail you can have in your caustics because basically there will be more caustics generated for this respective light in here then. And only if you have the feeling that your caustics in general are too undefined, too blurry or not detailed enough, then you can slowly raise the subdivisions for the light. But keep in mind that this will really increase the render time or calculation time of the caustics a lot. So now with everything pretty much left at default, let's start a new rendering with this bucket type mode in here, and then see what are the difference compared to the progressive method before. So you can see that now there is a pass here that says building caustics photon map. And that's basically pre-generating the caustics for our scene. And only once this part is finished, the rendering will actually start. So you can see after the photo map was generated, the rendering itself didn't really require any additional time because the photon map calculation was done before the rendering started. And now let's check out here the finished result. So you can see that the quality of the caustics has some problems still. There's this kind of overall blotchiness here. And also they look kind of overall quite blurry compared to before when we let the progressive method render for roughly 10 minutes. So compared to the progressive mode, the photo map mode has a lot more options that have to be fine tuned and tweaked in order to get a finished end result. And those you can all find here in this caustics tab. And again, as said, in the light properties. So for different settings, I would suggest to check out the official documentation for caustics. If you scroll down a little bit here, you can find nice examples to see what each of those parameters is doing. For example, you can see what happens if you play with the search distance or if you play with the photon emit radius or with the max photon amount in here. So in my case, in order to get a more finished result, I will go into the V-Ray properties of my sunlight, bump up the overall subdivisions to let's say 5000. And this will increase the calculation time by a lot, but it will also provide much more detail. And then I will just lower this search distance and also lower the max photons to let's say 60. And then I will auto save this map so that I don't need to recalculate it for the next frame. So I can just go inside here and just call it caustics here and then I can also use this option here in order to immediately load the map after it's finished and then this way for all the next frames that I'm rendering I don't need to recalculate always my photon map. So now we can start the rendering and see what happens. So the photo map calculation with those settings took around three minutes and I ended up speeding this whole progress in the video a lot so that you don't have to wait through that. And you can see that now there's a lot of more details in there. The caustics are overall less soft and we don't have this overall blotchiness anymore. And also what happened is that now this mode here switched to this from file mode and it's loading the caustic map that we auto saved here earlier. So now if I re-render the frame, it doesn't need to pre-calculate this photon map pass anymore. And I can start immediately with the rendering. 
So in summary, Corsex provide a nice but in render times quite expensive way to make certain kind of rendering look more realistic. But as I mentioned earlier, I would only advise to use them in very specific situations where you really have to use Corsex in order to generate the effect that you're looking for. And in your day-to-day -day work, that's probably not really the case. As I said, for 99% of the work that I do, I never tend to use them. But it's nice to know that they're there for a certain kind of situations. So there you have it. Those are, in my opinion, all the important things that there are to know when using Caustics and V-Ray. And if you like this kind of content, you can subscribe to this channel to not miss out on any additional videos. And also chances are that you like the content that I provide over on my Patreon, where you can get access to all of my scene files, additional bonus videos or whole classes. So check out this if you're interested in that. And other than that, take care and see you in the next one.